This week on Hermitcraft. Does this look like the face of mercy to you? Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap, your unofficial guide to stuff that happened. My name is Pixel Riffs, our writer is Zloy XP, and wow, Jarvis is savage. Will I ever find a girlfriend? Does say? a fly think? Uh, a fly doesn't even have a brain. Seriously, Cub had better stab a Mind Stone through him so he can be less of a jerk. Yes, we're excited for Infinity War, shut up! And with that out of the way, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with False Symmetry and her very flammable shulker box. Lucky, no, don't you dare! That just went in the fire, didn't it? Oh, I'm gonna cry. That's like a chest full of quartz, gone in a puff of smoke. False continues where she left off last week, at the nether gates of the gaming district and the hell circus that comes with it. To bridge the overall theme from one dimension to another, she puts miniature versions of already established minigames, such as the Tangler and the Boat Ice Racetrack, into the nether room leading up to the portal. She could have just trapped a ghast and called it the Dangler. On the other side of the portal, Tango Tech and ZAF decide to try out the stuff they've been pushing to the customers, going through most minigames available for two players, which inevitably means a boatload of karma for Tango after putting the Hermits through the Tangler. I'm doing so bad, I'm getting stuck on this thing! <laughs> Yes! No! <laughs> yeah, serious drops here. Look at the rock! Oh, what? Oh, man, what did you hit? Why are some of these slime blocks not slimy? In his own time, Tango establishes more infrastructure around his base, this time way more pedestrian than the usual stuff. He makes pathways, is what I mean. And it's about time he took care of the roadworks with all those potholes around the place. Ah! Okay, this is the part where we drink the happy potion. Earth's fun. I'm very sad right now. Curse you, hidden lava trap pit thing of misery and embarrassment. The pathways around TFC's fort aren't quite as dangerous, but he still thinks they could use a little more excitement. While mulling over lighting options for the residential district, he lays out a tree-lined path and splits it to meet up with other entrances to his fort wall. So now when you storm the castle, you have options. And then any construction after that will just take those trees into account. Scar City has quite some ways to enter it too, now that Scar has equipped it with landing pads, but a very limited number of them, mind you, and most not being reserved for the helicopters that we know obviously exist. The air transport Scar expects you to take to his city is instead a rocket. Even ignoring that a rocket liftoff would probably burn half the city and suffocate the other half in smoke, do you know how much noise they make? I guess you better be deaf on arrival if you're thinking about purchasing an apartment nearby. But then again, the main skyscraper has ended up looking like a giant retro-style jukebox with that round roof, so you'd expect noises from this neighbourhood. Well, at least it will cover up the piston noises from the Rainbow Road Scar has ordered from Cub Fan's Splash of Colour shop, the one that swaps for a regular floor and back. All right, there we go. All right, so let me uh, let me write out a book here, and I'll be right back. I would like a splash of color added to Scar City. The crosswalks under the central skyscraper are drab and gloomy. I would like a color walkway, like the one that the sh in the shop that functions like a crosswalk. Thanks, Scar. This, I like this. Maybe the blue wave. Okay, let's try uh -huh, out uh -huh. uh, a few more. Uh, then you got Bob, good old Bob. Oh, Bob the Creeper Building Inspector right there. There's quite some color splashing that Cubfan has been doing anyway. Trying to, for once, get some use out of the glazed terracotta blocks, he started repainting the floor of his Guardian farm into kaleidoscopic patterns the 50s would be proud of. And while the stuff looks amazing from the point of view of a flying by cloud, the cruel irony is that close up, it frankly looks like a unicorn litter box. Cub's less colourful services are also required by Rendog, who's been struggling with his one-man quest to obtain a double chest of all the reasonably acquired items in the game, especially considering his methods of obtaining flint are unusual. So it's like a wave of gravel, isn't it? Wow. Okay. Did we literally only get two flint out of that? We we got we got two flint out of that. Luckily, Cub's been farming so much stuff at maximum efficiency that he's got Ren covered and can spare stacks upon stacks of Prismarine without batting an eyelid. But that isn't Ren's only request, as the Mobilisa project still needs some guest builders, and he even shows Cub how to find it this time, so there's hope for the Elven City yet. While he's in the mood to get a piggyback from other server members, Ren makes his way over to Impulse SV's Blaze Farm to grab a double chest of Blaze Rods. And if there's anyone who knows farms, it's Impulse. He's got farms on top of farms this season, as this week he builds four crop farms to disguise the top of the mob farms dangling from the outer ring of Atlantis. 
He has to push a few villagers around to make it work, but hey, at least they aren't floating to their deaths anymore. But I uh, got all this figured out here, guys. Got some silos, you know, for each item that we are collecting. So we got our carrots here, and these are coming in, oh my goodness, coming in fast, coming in hot, I love it. Wales Knight, on the other hand, won't have any problems with his traders because they're all make-pretend imaginary people. Well, at least their marketplace is pretty spiffy and looks actually quite cozy compared to the holding cells people use for actual villagers. Plus, the career opportunities are way better. First things first, let's kind of say that this stall right here is where people go to buy, like, fish. Things related to horses and, and stuff like that. This shop is for, like, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables and stuff. Still, gotta protect them and continue the keep theme, so Wells raises another wall in the castle perimeters, staying historically accurate, except way more awesome. As one wall is raised, another one falls. Joe Hills decides that the most efficient way of closing the drawbridge of Castle Ravenloft is to have it drop in from above the main entrance. The end result is so impressive looking, he decides to put the switch inside the castle where nobody will see it happen. Although, we'll concede that the point is for the D&D parties to feel more of a sense of dread when they make it back outside and realise they're locked in. To complete the illusion, Joe rigs up the drawbridge outside to collapse into a man-made ravine, which he creates using TNT and some helpful sheep. And then I have a bunch of TNT blow up, right? Like that? That seems to make sense to me. Well, I think a sheep stepped on one of those platforms back there. Hey, Will. Good job, sheep. We are going to have to patch this up. Joe isn't the only one with a vendetta against animals this week. Having filled up almost the entire cobblestone storage system with one brief AFK session, Mumbo decides to stock up on supplies and go on a bear hunt, then promptly finds one within 200 blocks of his starting point and immediately gets the head to drop. <laughs> I mean, this is, an, um, <laughs> this is amazing, but also, <laughs> it's ruined my plans for the episode. So an impromptu headhunt begins, taking him to jungles all over the server in search of parrots and glory. Back at Old Bumbo's underground grotto, which totally sounds like a jazz bar I would visit, he installs two cactus farms behind the walls. After one design which was so compact the only space the cacti could fall was onto other cacti, he rebuilds the whole thing and swears himself off cactus for the rest of his days. To distract him from the abundance of succulents, Iskal proposes another end-busting trip where they compete to collect the most shulker shells. But this time, there's more than honour on the line. The winner gets to win, and the loser has to remove all the facial hair from their Minecraft skin. Although Mumbo points out that if his moustache has to go, then all the Bumbos should probably lose theirs as well. But at least he'll look less like Stalin. Seriously, Google Stalin Minecraft skin and look at the second result. This might affect the latest addition to the Bumbo family, as Iskal introduces Gumbo Bear Tonai to the world of Candyland he's growing inside a hill at his base. The early drafts look nothing like a gummy bear, but throw a moustache on it and nobody will know the difference. At least until a certain someone loses a certain bet. Dude! Dude! If I get hit by one more, I'm gone! <laughs> no, Bumbo, don't do it! I can't look how many there are! <laughs> <laughs> no! No, you don't! Iskal has one more piece of business to take care of as he arrives at his Hitman for Hire shop to pick up the order from Scar. And while previous episodes have shown he has no issues with killing Rendog, the fact that he's now a political target is vexing. It's an easy hit. However, it goes against, it, it favors the Vexes. And sort of, I, I'm kind of working for the Vexes if I do this, and you guys know. You guys know that the Vexes sat and did nothing as my island exploded and my, my scally was spread all over the place. And finally, there's Azuma Void, who seemingly wants to get in on the spicy drinks industry, judging by the size of the netherwalt farm he made for himself this week. That's quite an amount of quickly shifting soul sand. We'd even call it quicksand, but it makes you go slow, so ugh, this is all sorts of confusing. All right, all replanted, 308 spots for Netherwart, and oh, look at that, all the minecarts came back. Excellent, this is looking perfect, isn't it? And that's just about it for this week's recap. Our writer is XP, and my name is Pixel Rips. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here, and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. I, I played it every day. I play it to this right. day now. I'm a world you're, champion. You're, are you on the road? You're in tournaments and things? You're yeah, the hungry yeah. Hippo. They they it's used to call me yeah. 
They used to call me Hungry Hippo. That was my name <laughs> all throughout college. <laughs> right, the right, right, Hungry right. Hippo. 